I have got one hell of an exciting day lined up today. I'm going for a bike ride with Formula One driver and keen cyclist Valtteri Bottas and pro cyclist Tiffany Cromwell, like the ultimate sporting power couple. We're going to talk Formula One, we're going to talk bikes, we're going to talk all about their brand new gravel race. I'm excited to get there. We haven't got far to drive. I'm just praying the sun comes out because at the moment it's been raining. Look at this absolute wall in front of her. Yeah. Who do you think is the fastest Formula One driver on the bike? <laughs> Me. Yeah, all right. So I'm driving south of Adelaide to a region called McLaren Vale, which is famous for making wine. Now we're only two kilometers away and um, I'm actually slightly nervous and excited to meet the pair of them. Hopefully they haven't stood me up. How do you go about greeting two international sporting stars, I hear you ask? Well, for some reason, I decided it would be great to greet them by doing the worst skid I have ever done. That was my best skid I could do. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Bouchery, how's it going? Good. good morning. Tiffany, how how's it going? All good. Um, right, thanks for your time for today. Uh, we're going to go gravel riding. What have we got planned? Yeah, we're here in beautiful McLaren Vale, um, going to check out some of the Rattle Gravel course ahead of our race on Friday. Right, you got the route loaded up? Yep, we have a route. Uh, I've done actually most of the course, but Tiff still ha hasn't done it, so uh, we need to check a few spots, so especially the first climb. The first climb is going to yeah. be spicy. <laughs> um, what way? That way? Straight down the hill. That way, down the hill. Then straight up. Rattle Gravel is co-founded and co-owned by 10-time Formula One Grand Prix winner Valtteri Bottas, two-time Giro d'Italia Donne stage winner Tiffany Cromwell and former professional cyclist Amy Charity. It's a mass start gravel event for everyone from pro racers to even the most relaxed of cyclists, but probably not best suited to this little guy. Um, so Tiffany, you've just finished uh, racing the Tour Down Under, like kicking off this race season. Um, Valtteri, you've been out here as well, obviously yep. not racing Tour Down Under, no. but sort of soaking up the sunshine, checking out the gravel, road riding. Like what else have you been up to? Yeah, so I've been doing lots of riding. Um, yeah, seeing lots of new roads. Uh, getting ready for rattle gravel. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's been a nice time off. Um, good training at the same time. and. Uh, We've been to quite a few different places, like Kangaroo Island for yeah. New Year's, and uh, went to the Road Nationals where I did the Grand Pondo. Oh yeah, cool. Straight up through roads closed? Straight up. Right, look at that. Yeah, local traffic. Local traffic is us. Um, so how was the tour down under, actually? Hey, um, it was really great. You know, it's the first year I've been back since 2020, and obviously having the Canyon Cheyenne team yeah. out here was nice, because they don't come every year. It's always like a maybe we do, maybe we don't with the team. Um, but yeah, three really interesting stages, something for everyone, you know, huge crowds. Like you can see there's attraction with women cycling, people want to watch it. And as a team, like we came here with a young team, except for me. <laughs> um, and, you know, so it came without pressure, but it meant the girls had a chance to step up and be in positions they wouldn't normally be in. We have some of our, um, Riders who typically are a lead rider within the team. So, right, Valtteri, can we get this in early, an agreement on camera that if, if by some chance in the race we're together, yeah. can we promise not to attack each other? <laughs> Pinky promise. Pinky promise. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, that's it. I've got it on record now. These guys are not hanging around, but what one hell of a day so far. Having a good time, look at them. They've left me, they're not even waited. Rattle Gravel is a play on words from Radelaide, which is the affectionate term used by people who love the city of Adelaide, which is just north of where we are now. There are two different routes to choose from. You have the 108 kilometer version, which I will be doing, and also the 70 kilometer version. However, both routes start with what can only be described as an absolute brute of a climb. You mean what? The wall. The wall. Um, 
I was going to say describe what the climb's like, but I feel like you've covered it off with the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, look at that. Having navigated our way up the wall, which may or may not have required a mid-ride pit stop to adjust Tiffany's gears, and also allow Valtteri and I to have a quick breather, it seemed like a great time to stop and chat more. And um, Valtteri, first thing, a most obvious like question I want to ask you really is, um, you're obviously a Formula One driver, we're talking like crazy high tech, high speeds, it's like the pinnacle of motorsport, but like, what is it that draws you to cycling more than anything else? Um, I've always rode my bike a bit and uh, also for training, you know, it, I always used to ride a bit, but then when I met Tiff, obviously I uh, I definitely got more into it and yeah. one, one big motivation was to try and keep up with her, <laughs> so yeah. I started training, but then the more I've learned about the sport and uh, yeah, I just have huge respect for the professionals and what they're capable of doing and how much commitment you need in your life to, to become one. So Tiffany, your like entire career has been built around road racing, but then with the like takeoff of gravel over the recent years, you've kind of dived into that world and immersed yourself in it a bit as well. So what's been like what's the draw to, to the gravel scene trying to like combine that in with the road? Yeah, I think it was something that came. Hey, 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 hey. hello. Some people checking out the course. <laughs> Look at the speed, they're going well. Yeah. I, I couldn't speak going out there. Yeah. Is there an e-bike? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, so how it came about was first actually 2019, um, the team was heading out to, it was the Women's Tour of Colorado, and it was the first edition of SBT Gravel at that time. I didn't really know anything about gravel, but they were like, Canyon's a major sponsor, can, can you and I had my teammate Ella um, race it, but we weren't allowed to take it serious. We had to just do the short course, have fun, because the priority was Tour of Colorado. I was like, yeah, okay, okay. And it was so much fun, like it was such a blast, you know, just the whole scene, like the vibe around it, like you're hanging out with people before, racing hard and then hanging out again afterwards. And that was okay, it just took it as, yep, all right, cool. There's so many cool races, yeah. like, they're all, like you say, your race is new this year, there's so many like big events like popping up all around the world. Yeah. And I think it's, that's a really good point what you said about that first like experience in the gravel racing you had, that like the rule was to not take it too seriously. I feel like, that's an important one for gravel racing now because whilst it has grown and evolved, I think at the like heart of gravel racing, it's still like having fun. Absolutely. Exactly. Like, Voucher, you've experienced like quite a lot of gravel races. And I think like people have arrived there with the mindset of racing, but still like with a bit of a party vibe. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's what I like about it. Like uh, road racing for me is a bit too serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. Well, you do the serious <laughs> bit when you get in the car. Yeah, exactly. So, like uh, cycling is meant to be like, Something to take you away from it, I guess. Exactly. And compliment like, yeah, it, racing. For me, it's a great way to kind of escape the hectic F1 world, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, for, physically for sure it's good, but also mentally I find it's really, really refreshing. Now, Australia is famous for a number of different things. Beautiful weather, sunny beaches, neighbours, huge spiders, and of course, barbecues. But I need to know the real important stuff, like what's the difference between a kangaroo and a joey? Um, this is something I was really wondering. Please help. It's smaller. Significantly smaller. A little bit smaller. Well, well yeah. make, make your minds up. Significantly or a little bit? Let's just say smaller. Yeah. Because uh, like you can, like the thing is, there's different types of kangaroos as well. There's the big reds, which they're the really muscly ones. Yeah, well, true. Just sometimes see boxing. But oh. then you also have... There's other other varieties or other species of kangaroos. Small kangaroos with big kangaroos are joeys. Small kangaroos by themselves, probably a wallaby. Yeah. Correct. I'm glad we've cleared that up. We've actually been uh, pressing on a little bit on this little loop. Look at them, there they are. Keeping us working hard. I've noticed we've been going a lot quieter when it goes uphill. Yeah, uh, like she's cruising and up doing 300 watts. Yeah, same. Oh, it's just what happens when you're big and heavy. Right, who do you think is the fastest Formula One driver on the bike? <laughs> Me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> to flip that question around, who do you think would be the fastest cyclist in a Formula One car? Mm. 
One of the I sprinters. Think a sprinter, yeah. Or Tom Pidcock. Pidcock would be pretty wild, I That's reckon. Correct, yeah. yeah, no fear. Okay, guys, how's um, progress on our route? Where are we going? So, actually, race would continue straight on this beautiful rolling road, but we go home this way. How far to home? 13 kilometers. Oh, easy. In a few days' time, it's pretty cool to think that the three of us are going to be racing your brand new event. And it's also cool that you're getting to race the same event together. Now, I'm guessing you don't really get to do that very often. Actually, I think this will be, we've done a couple done times couple of races Belgium together. Off of Kansas, but yeah. usually that's my end of season. Which she led me one on a finish line. It's pretty kind. cool. Um, but normally, obviously, I'm racing like the longest distances and he's normally yeah. wanting to do slightly shorter. But this one, it's like the perfect medium, both around the 100k exactly, mark. Yeah. Right, before we um, crack on and finish this ride, yeah. I've got some quick fire questions for you. Cool. Um, I don't want to give you a heads up. I want to get honest answers quick. Yeah. So I'm going to put you on the spot. So um, you can argue between you who goes first, but just shout. Um, so if you could only have one bike forevermore, what would you have? Road bike, gravel bike, mountain bike, BMX, chopper bike, commuter bike, Time trial bike, I mean anything else. Gravel bike, absolutely. Gravel e-bike, because when I retire, I don't want to have to suffer on the clamps. That's a smart answer, <laughs> thinking ahead there. Yeah. Um, which would you prefer Which would you prefer to watch live, Formula One or bike racing? Formula One. Yeah? Well, you, you see more. Sure. You see more. Foutry. Bike racing, you see them wash past. And that, then okay, that's see a more. good point. A finish of a bike yeah. race is pretty good. Okay. I prefer to be in the F1 race, so I will say I would watch bike race. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's a really good point, actually, yeah. Um, so when you guys are out and about traveling together, who does most of the driving? Me. Valtteri. Who's the better driver? <laughs> Probably <laughs> I him. I don't want to cause an argument I should now. be, in theory, no? Right, final question. Would you rather watch Formula One Drive to Survive or Tour de France Unchained? Tour de France Unchained. Uh, I actually... I actually watched it, binge watched it uh, on one flight this year. Whoa, so wow. Last year. God. It was good, really Tiffany. interesting. Before I met Valtteri, definitely drive to survive. I, I was one of the ones that definitely enjoy the first series, but I haven't really followed it since. Oh, I love the first series. Because I know need... how they create the stories. Yeah, you don't need to watch Drive to Survive. You can just be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And That's I also so don't need to watch Tour de France because I know what happens behind the scenes and I'm sure they yeah, make the You guys have actually got the worst of both worlds because, <laughs> yeah. wow, there's the program's pointless for you. You're like, guys, we're living the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, bike ride done. Let's get changed, let's get showered, let's get some fresh clothes on. Um, Valtteri says he's going to have a beer. Sounds good to me. Okay, guys, right, we've done a very much um, Formula One-esque style pit stop to get showered and freshened up. After a really good ride, thanks for that. Um, but I think it'd be nice to talk about a little bit of what the future holds. So. Tiffany, this year for your race season, like what have you got coming up? What are your plans and aspirations? Yeah, obviously I'm still balancing the road and the gravel um, calendar. Uh, start of the season is definitely focused more on road. It is an Olympic year. We have Paris coming up. By no means easy to make the team with Australia. We have a lot of depth now when we only have three spots, oh. but I'll still give it a crack, see what I can do in the early season if there is an outside chance of making the team. So coming up, I head over to, after Rattle Gravel, obviously, um, head over to Victoria for Cadell's Great Ocean Road Race and then tour of UAE on the way back through to Europe and then I'll be full focus on the classics. On the way back through to Europe, like just yeah. a casual <laughs> Well, it makes yeah. sense, you yeah, know, yeah. you fly over, might as well continue the warm races instead of going straight to the cold classics. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then we kind of see how it's going and then we start focusing a bit more gravel, but still, you know, road and gravel because but keeping it fun, as we said exactly, earlier. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So a few of the UCI Gravel World Series races. Um, we obviously still have the Women's Tour de France Fair, Mavic Zwift. Yeah. Um, so if the team want me there. Finland Gravel. Finland Gravel. Oh, good plug, I like mm. that. <laughs> Valtteri, what about you? What's coming up? I mean, I'm a Formula One fan, so I've got an idea of like how the season evolves. But yeah. come on, give us a bit of an explainer. What are you up to in the coming weeks and months? Yeah, so basically straight after Rattle Gravel, uh, the day after flying back to Europe, Gotta drop some of my stuff at home and uh, then straight to the factory, which is based in uh, Hinwil, in Switzerland. And yeah, start all the simulator work uh, with the latest and greatest models of the new car, which yeah. actually will be quite exciting yeah. to get a feel. And then, of course, 
for us as a team, it's all the preseason filming, collateral stuff, which is sometimes not the most fun, yeah. but yeah, got to be done. Yeah. Uh, and then we have car launch already, it is actually in London on the 5th of February. Yeah. And then we start testing after. So, so testing is end of February. Yeah, exactly. And the first race also end of Feb. So, yeah. yeah. So and come, around, come around sort of real quick, doesn't it? It does. Valtteri, tell me more about this ice hockey team. I'm intrigued <laughs> to it. I've like yeah. definitely just mentioned it. Yeah, Come on, explain I think this. Missed probably a couple of things. But yeah, there's a few things yeah, you've missed out. The there. coffee roaster in Finland. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. My most recent thing is my own blend of wine, actually from McLaren Well. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, I'm part owner of uh, ice hockey team in Finland because uh, I played hockey as a, as a kid, yeah. like for 10 years. I wondered what the link was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like, obviously in the winter, I couldn't really drive go-karts. So I played, yeah. it was always all, all about hockey and go-karts. Yeah. So now I'm living that hockey dream, yeah. uh, being part of the team and I'm on the board of the team. So I'm just learning a lot about the business side as well uh -huh. of it. And uh, yeah, quite a few investments here and there. and. Uh, keeps me busy and again like eventually when my professional driving career ends I've, for sure I've got plenty of things to kind of uh, play with. Yeah. It sounds amazing you guys are sat, like planning for the future it's a really smart move and um, basically yeah thanks very much I do want to say like I've had an absolutely mega time spending our morning out riding I hope everybody at home has enjoyed hearing what you guys have to say and sort of sharing our little ride with us and um, I've got to say also if anyone at home is ever traveling to Adelaide and you've got the chance to bring a bike, head out on the roads or the gravel trails, you really gotta do it. It's incredible, isn't it? Absolutely. It is. So, right, guys, thanks very much. We're gonna go. You can get your budgie smugglers on. <laughs> and, um, well, see there more. If you wanna see more of the cool videos that we make, subscribe to GCN and um, turn on your notifications because in the coming weeks, you'll see all of us doing the gravel race. Right. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers.